And good morning, my Common Sense America. This is Eden Hill. Welcome. It's Tuesday, February the 14th. And happy Valentine's Day to each and every one of you out there who are tuning in to Common Sense America. Thank you so much for joining us. Feel free and hop over and check out all of my shows at Common Sense America on YouTube. Scrolling right across the bottom of your screen, if you missed of any of the important issues that we've been covering, yes, we have been covering transgender issues. Yes, we have been covering CRT. We have been covering the next generation of what is happening to our country. Yes, we have been covering defense. We have been covering veterans issues, and we are covering faith and freedom for sure. Here at Common Sense America, we're about God, we're about country, we are about that flag right behind us. And I tell you what, we have a great new guest joining us at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Martha Vane will be with us. She is a conservative family farming policy Virginian, and she has a lot more on that resume of hers. And I'm so thankful to friends of ours that introduced us, mutual friends of ours. She will be joining the show at 930 this morning. But I wanted just to let you know some of the news headlines today. I tell you what, I know this is a podcast and no, we are not on a regular station, but yes, we are streaming live on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Rumble. And I tell you what, I would love your comments and I am getting your comments. You know what? Yesterday, I'm not going to stop talking about these issues, whether you tune in live or whether you tune in after the show. Yesterday, we had on Senate candidate uh, Jonathan E. Mord from the great state of Virginia talking about CRT, talking about transgender, talking about what he will do when he gets elected to the United States Senate, and that is defunding schools that are uh, infiltrating their schools with the transgender agenda. And guess what? Next week, we are going to be bringing over to the show a university student, 18 years uh, eighteen years old, who was with United Women Federation of Tennessee, who is going to be talking about the transgender issues and what she has been uncovering at her university. Yes, we're going to be bringing people in who believe and fighting against this infiltration in our schools. You know, I got a call yesterday from a local, I'll just call this person a local official, raising the flag on issues that were not and are not being reported here in the great state of North Carolina. And I'll tell you what, some of the local conservative groups are turning their eye to it as well. And you know what they're turning their eyes to? Sexual assault on children in the local schools? Assault on school teachers? Yes. Those things are happening in our nation's backyard, whether you realize it or not, but they're here right here in Eastern North Carolina. Next week, we're going to be revealing quite a bit. It'll be a two day part two, part one and part two series. These are the kinds of stories I am receiving privately from people as I put out this podcast. So I'm thankful to each and every one of you who are tuning in, who are supporting this, this show. It's been going on since the end of last summer. And though you may not publicly comment, you are privately commenting. And that's why we continue to bring these top interviews to you each and every day to educate you on what is happening in our nation's backyard. I get fired up. I may not be a mother, but I am a mama bear. I'm all about saving our babies and I'm all about saving our babies and their minds because the school systems are not supposed to be doing that. We the parents, we the people, we the godparents, we the aunts and uncles and the grandparents, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So on this Valentine's Day, I am grateful for the parents that are standing up for the parents who are not afraid to stand up on this Valentine's Day, I'm thankful to my parents who have are still together after 47 years of marriage, who were not afraid to stand up for our family, our beliefs, our common sense. Whether it was in the church, whether it was in politics, whether it was in the community, whether it was when my brother was playing ball or I was playing volleyball, 
They brought common sense. They brought faith. They brought God and country and patriotism to our family. So thank you for standing up for the beliefs of marriage. Thank you for setting an example of what it looks like for 47 years of marriage. I applaud you. Happy anniversary and happy Valentine's Day to each and every one of you. I was looking at the common sense headlines this morning, as I always love to do. And as you guys all know, if you haven't heard the news, former UN ambassador, former governor of South Carolina, she announced today, Nikki Haley is running for president of the United States. And when we bring over Martha at 930, Martha and I will be talking about a lot of what's going to be happening in 2024. And she has worked with President Trump. She has worked in that space and a couple different angles and a couple different levels. But we're going to be talking about all the contenders who are throwing their, their hat in the ring. And I was looking over the news headlines for common sense, but also looking over the news headlines of Nikki Haley. There's already a lot of criticism of her announcing her candidacy. I would love your thoughts. I know there's people that watch this show that really respect and admire her. Mm. But I do know many others who do not. And I looked at her campaign video that launched. I saw it on Instagram. I heard it on my friend's show, 990 AM, uh, Morning Drive with Krista Gall. Make sure you guys check that out every morning. And I listened to the very first couple sentences that were written for this campaign commercial. It immediately went to the race card. She talks about a divided community in the beginning. And I'll play it for you guys so you guys can watch it if you haven't seen it. And Martha and I will talk about it. But what immediately turned me off was her bringing up the race issue, just like Obama, just like Kamala. How is she any different? And yeah, I did watch it the whole way through. But that's my question. So are we going to do this? Are we really going to do this? My husband has Indian in his background, just like, but she is of a different origin. But I don't understand why she had to open up with that card. It is not necessary if she's trying to unify the United States of America, because we are so far gone, thanks to Obama and Biden. And yes, I'm blaming those two because they deserve the blame. No, it was not President Donald Trump. I'm looking for a leader for the president of the United States. I'm not looking for someone who will talk about this and this and this and this and the diversity, equity, and inclusion piece. You heard Jonathan E. Moore say yesterday, it has removed all the focus of what this country was founded on. And we are losing our country every day from a defense standpoint, international standpoint, because we are more focused on the transgender issues and the equity issues. Okay, I grew up in Pennsylvania in Chester County, middle-class family. I also grew up in North New Jersey. I do have a Jersey attitude and I'm proud of it. My family is Hungarian, English, and my grandparents came over to Ellis Island. I am high school and college graduated, educated. I had two working class, middle class parents who graduated from trade schools. I have a husband who retired from the United States Army and who's a veteran. I'm a veteran spouse. What else, what other labels would you like to put on me? Oh, I'm a woman, but I'm a woman with common sense and faith. And I'm really agitated by how she started that off. It's turned me off. What about a country of faith? A country of all believers coming together. Oh, and let me talk to you about something else. Believing, faith, common sense. 
You know, we didn't get to talk a lot about the Super Bowl yesterday, but there were a couple things that did stand out to me while I watched the cheesy commercials. I, you know, I loved the Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, Dunkin' Donuts commercial. That was cute. Uh, Bradley Cooper and his mom, T-Mobile, that was cute. But everything else, it was wokeness in your face. And I had heard Chris Degall, 990 AM, who I always refer to for the morning drive, talking about the Jesus commercials. And I had heard his commentary and he was playing some of the clips from some of the women's talk shows and things like that. But one thing he didn't necessarily go in on this point. So I feel at liberty that I can talk about this, but he did inspire me to talk about this because I'm a Stratcoms professional. And in that space comes branding and some digital marketing and designing and public relations for my clients. So when you look at something, you brand something and you want them, whether it's veteran spouse seeking to help other veteran spouses, I'll just choose a low hanging fruit, something I've been working on for a while. But the Jesus commercials, I saw it. And it's, uh, it's all about he gets us. Well, they're branding Jesus. And a lot of the commentary they talked about was branding Jesus. I didn't know Jesus needed to be branded. Did you? Uh-uh. That's not what the Bible stands for. I would like to hear more Christians stand up. The people in the churches. The pastors, where are you guys on this issue? No, Andy Stanley's standing up for LGBTQ XYZ. But where are you guys standing up against the branding of Jesus? Jesus doesn't need to be branded. He's a vindicator. He's a great provider, the great protector. He is the I am. But why do we need to brand him? Have, are we that far down the hole of wokeness that we can't get out of it? Why brand the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, Christianity is one of the biggest faith spaces in the United States. But yet we still need to brand the man who walked on water. The man who helped the blind to see again? Really? That's pathetic. And as my husband would say, what a bunch of idiots or idiots. Yeah, it is. The great I am does not need to be branded. New York Post reported this morning as we were watching the Super Bowl. And like I told you guys yesterday, I did go to sleep at mid at uh, halftime because I thought the Eagles had it. Front cover of the New York Post says today, Ian O'Connor wrote, not holding up, refs blew it by not enacting common sense on a crucial Super Bowl call. On Sunday night, the final minutes, the classic Super Bowl that saw the Chiefs and Eagles locked in Mortal Kombat was a perfect time for the officiating crew to go that route of common sense. And it sounds like they did not. Common sense. Where is the common sense? I'm looking for it. I'm also looking for a leader. I want to read to you just a little bit about what USA Today was reporting came out yesterday. How were the Super Bowl commercials for Jesus Christ received? He gets us ran as during the big game. From what I am seeing and from what I'm hearing from people, they were not well received. Here's the article. Amid the snack treats, the booze, the car, and the gambling pitches, the service of extending a brand on Super Bowl Sunday nudged an unlikely figure into the spotlight of what's often referred to as the USA's biggest secular holiday, Jesus Christ. 
Sunday's games got two doses, the first coming midway through the second quarter with Patsy Klein soaring vocals serving as the backdrop for a 30-second advertisement for He Gets Us, a group touting itself as a movement to reintroduce people to the Jesus of the Bible and his confounding love and forgiveness. He Gets Us aired two spots within a broadcast charging $7 million for 30 seconds. Wonder who was funding this. And the first he gets us urges viewers to be childlike while replaying still and moving images of children, ranging from you re reuniting after quarantine to bathroom etiquette to sharing headphones on a bus. Really bathroom etiquette? We really need to know how to go to the bathroom and what etiquette it is? Really? A 60 second ad later in the game, interdispersed images of anger and perceived division to tout a message of inclusion. All goes back to that equity piece, doesn't it? Not unlike well-known beer brands advertising on the big game, Christianity remains the dominant religious force in the United States. Though leaders are concerned about brand diminishment in an increasingly stratified landscape. Well, I wonder why, ladies and gentlemen, you continue to take the Lord, the God Almighty, out of everything. You take prayer out of schools. You take the um, Pledge of Allegiance out of schools. You take the national anthem and you distort it. You remove it from social entities because it does not no longer go with your community standards. Well, no wonder the landscape is changing. The article continues. That's in part what created the conditions for a pair of decidedly sobering ads that may have killed a buzz or two throughout the land. What sort of reception did the ads get? Again, I'm reading the usatoday.com story. I'll send this to you around on the social profiles. The 30 second and 60 second ads run by He Gets Us placed eighth and 15th respectively on the USA Today ad meter, which ranks commercials by consumers ratings. It also generated some social media buzz with Christian Super Bowl among the trending topics on Twitter on Monday morning, yesterday morning. Though the tenor of that buzz was mixed with AOC among those criticizing the ads. I don't know why they interviewed her, but they said something tells me Jesus would not spend millions of dollars on Super Bowl ads to make fascism look benign. She wrote on Twitter. I swear she's a nut job. What's the Servant Foundation? Servant Foundation is a cancer-based, Kansas, excuse me, Kansas-based nonprofit that reported 405 million in total revenue for fiscal year 2020. From 2018 to 2020, Servant Foundation donated more than 50 million to the Alliance of Defending Freedom, a nonprofit known for fighting abortion rights and non-discrimination laws against, according to Lever News. The Southern Poverty Law Center listed the Alliance Defending Freedom as an anti-LGBTQ hate group in 2016. So who donates to He Gets Us? While the group donors are largely anonymous, a significant figure publicly not acknowledged his family was one of the biggest backers. Hobby Lobby founder and billionaire David Green informed talk show host Glenn Beck his family was helping fund the ads. Green and Hobby Lobby won a significant victory in 2014 when the Supreme Court ruled that Hobby Lobby and other closely held corporations can continue to deny providing health insurance coverage for some or all forms of birth control based on religious objections. The ruling affected more than 60 million American workers at the time. He said, you're going to see it at the Super Bowl. He gets us, Green told Beck. We are wanting to say we being a lot of people that he gets us. He understands us. He loves who we hate. I think we have to let the public know and create a movement. But what kind of movement are you creating? Again, Jesus doesn't need to be branded. And then the final question in this article is, why does Jesus need a PR guy? In short, like anything else, to trump up interest in a brand, some seem, some see diminishing. God always wins. Thanks to my mama Mia, who taught me that from an early age and that I've seen in my 45 years of, of living on this earth. God always wins. He doesn't need a PR guy. So on that note, we have just about five minutes until Martha Vane comes over and joins Common Sense America for the first time. We're going to be talking everything, farming, politics. Nikki Haley will air a little bit of her commercial talking about Trump. 
maybe DeSantis, his new book coming out on the 28th. They're going to be talking a lot. And what were <laughs> those objects being shot down in the sky one after the other? We're going to be talking a lot about all of those issues here on today's podcast at Common Sense America. I'm Eden Hill. Thanks for joining us here this morning. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Common Sense America. I'm Eden Hill. And thank you guys so much for joining here on this Tuesday, February the 14th. It is Valentine's Day. What are you guys doing today? What are you doing to celebrate your love? What are you doing to celebrate your spouse? What are you doing to celebrate this precious children of yours or your God kids? I know last night I sent messages over to my godsons who I absolutely adore and just think the world of. So you know what? Make sure you write a list today of what you are grateful for. I woke up this morning doing my devotions, drinking my cup of coffee, and then I got up and went and did my workout. But I was looking at one of Jenny Allen's devotionals that um, she posts on the Bible app, and she was talking about, you know, what are we grateful for? Knowing God, understanding God, what he has done in our lives, what he continues to do, what he did in the past and what he continues to do for our future. So what are you guys grateful for today? What are you guys grateful for this morning? Are you grateful for your freedom? Are you grateful that you can see? Are you grateful that you can stand up and walk? Are you grateful that you can lift your hands up and praise him? Are you grateful that you can hear that you have a heart that is ticking? that you have the energy and the excitement that he has instilled in you, that you have the Holy Spirit guiding you, that you have hair on your head, that you have the footsteps of peace, that you have the sword of salvation, you have the Bible, the Bible that guides you, that leads you. You have electricity, you have a roof over your head, you have clothes on your back and food in your stomach. What are you grateful for? The list continues. So when you get into a funk, and I'll be the first one to tell you, I can get into those funks and you know what? I'd rather just isolate myself. Well, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not good for mental health. That is not good for you physically, emotionally, spiritually, or mentally. When you get into those funks, get out there, get your ticker going, get your footsteps moving and be grateful. Look up to that sky and know that God has made you and he has made you for a purpose for such a time as this. Do not let the media, do not let social media, do not let comparisons tell you otherwise. Do not let people with their little snide remarks when they see you bring you down because they're jealous. And do not let vengeance get a hold of you. God will take care of that. Yes, he will. It's about 25 minutes after the hour. We're going to be bringing over Martha Fain. And I want to tell you a little bit about Martha. Let me go over to her Twitter account. If you have not yet done so, please go over and check her out. I am going to go ahead and post right now 
She is of faith, family, and freedom, politics, and policy. She is all things energy. Vote America first, as you could tell that she was working with the Trump team. She is a Virginia farmer, policy advisor, and commentator. And you know, we have a lot of people in common. And one thing I absolutely really just adore about her is her spirit and the conversation that we had when we first met. And another thing that I really adored about her was she is, she gets, she gets it. She understands what is happening in our nation. You know, one of her most recent, actually, she has this pinned on her Twitter account from 2015, but it's so relevant to today in 2023. If you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. There's exactly right. You know, as we're looking for leaders with character and integrity, as we are looking for those who will lead this nation, one nation under God, not one nation under China, not one nation under Russia, not one nation under DEI, not one nation under X, Y, and Z, but one nation under God, integrity is a the secret recipe. We must have integrity. Are you guys looking for integrity and in those that you work with and those that you, um, you know, communicate with? Are you looking for integrity? I know I am. I know I am. And in recent months, I have saw what integrity doesn't look like. And that is stealing from people and their livelihoods. And I will tell you this. I, I thought the other day when I was sitting and watching um, a couple of different things, and then I was looking at different things and just memories were flooding back. And one thing that I thought about was life was kinder then. And I was looking at a certain time in my life with my husband. What happened to that kindness here in our country, in our nation's backyard? What happened to that? Are we all just so filled with hate, anger, loss? What why are what happened to that kindness? I know that my husband and I were kind of struck yesterday by a compliment we received from someone we know who's pretty close to us. My husband decided just to pull out stakes and make them for a neighbor. And we ran them over there Super Bowl Sunday. And we got the sweetest message from them last night. We weren't looking for accolades or anything, but that neighbor had family there out of town and they were just so in awe of a community and neighbors actually giving away steaks and potatoes. They, they didn't understand it. What's happened to us? What's happened to us? Well, on that note, I'm going to bring over Martha and maybe she can answer what has happened to this great country of ours. Good morning, my beautiful. Happy Valentine's Day. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> As you can see, I'm wearing red for the occasion. Thank I, you. Thank you. You look fabulous, darling. <laughs> I have roses, the Valentine's Day roses next to me. And um, I'm not in my beloved home state of Virginia. I'm in sunny Palm Beach. So you can probably see some palm trees behind me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to start by saying... Valentine's Day. Oh, I feel incredibly you. honored and blessed to be on your program. Mm -hmm. and, um, really, thank you for everything you do. I, I, I'm just blessed and honored to be here. And I just want to take a moment to um, offer prayers and love and support uh, to the families in Michigan that have yes. this yes. loss. And as a nation, we are weeping. Our hearts are heavy. Um, you know, this is a time when we should be offering love and support to those families. Instead, so many are trying to politicize this horrific event. Yes. And it breaks my heart because I believe we're called to offer love and prayers and support um, when these tragedies happen. And yet um, there are those that are automatic, that are, uh, uh, that are already calling for, you know, a complete ban on yeah. um, Second Amendment rights. And I, you know, I, I tell people when these tragedies happen, you know, we, we need to lift as a nation, we need to lift up these families in prayer and, and show them support. And every time something like this happens, it's an automatic call to ban our Second Amendment rights that come from God, not the government. Exactly. And, you know, it's, you know, um, 
guns do not kill people. People kill people. And I say that just as a gentle reminder to all of those that are out there um, demanding a a complete ban on on our Second Amendment rights to remember that um, during this tragedy. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. My husband was telling me about that this morning. And, you know, I was I was sitting here. I had talked about all things this morning before I brought you over. And one thing that was really just striking to my core, striking to my core was the branding of Jesus and Jesus needing a PR team. And, you know, I how I'm linking it up to what happened in Michigan is this. We as a nation shouldn't have to brand Jesus or have a PR team for him, because if we hadn't have removed him from schools and prayer and continue the removal of him, we would be seeking him. We would be bringing more of him into everything. And that has happened over the years, how he just continues to be removed from everything. So when it comes to the prayer and thoughts towards these families, yes, most definitely. But well, and, you know, speaking of that, um, there's a complete uh, destruction of, you know, this, this desire to do away with the family unit. Exactly. And, and offering, you know, dark imagery and satanic imagery to yep. our children and it's the over sexualization of our yes. of um, our children in our country and you know i you know i have to say that you know I, I i'm a virginia girl i grew up right outside of our nation's capital i grew up proudly saying the pledge of allegiance you know yep. i come from a family where my mom and my dad taught us every day you know in the united states of america we are so blessed yes. to greatest country on earth where no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, it could be anything you want in life is hard. And, you know, we, we, I was taught, I'm the youngest of three girls. I was taught to love our country, to love America and our values, you know, our, our, to cherish our values. And, you know, I feel very blessed. My mom and my dad were married for 57 years before they both passed away. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I, 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 my heart aches because I'm seeing just the destruction of the family unit. Yes. And, and it's so important that we um, give our children a healthy, wholesome, all-American um, experience. You know, the ones that I had growing up, and I, I'm sure you had growing up, right? Yes. You know, yes. Of our beloved country and to yes. be patriotic and to be good people, to be good yes. to each other and to, you know... And, and what are we seeing now in the classroom? Um, we're seeing just a horrific display of, of wanting to tear down the family unit, of, of encouraging, you know, mm-hmm. of children, um, just just to, to not love our country, uh, to distrust, uh, to distrust, uh, you know, uh, each other. I mean, right. It, right. It, and also there's something else I want to bring up now. You know, growing up really had a strong sense of, of global politics, not just global politics, but global geography, right? You know, where, where we stood in the world, and and young people today just aren't learning um, about these fundamental principles of you know why we are the greatest nation on earth. And there's this exactly blurring of the lines. Yes, and, and it's um it's it's heartbreaking to see that. And, you know, I think that it's up to us. You know, I, I just had dinner with uh, Michael Flynn, General Flynn. Yes. Great, yeah. great, great patriot. And, you know, he's such a wise man. And I didn't realize this until uh, in, 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 until Saturday evening on, on February 11th when he, I don't know if you know this either. And I don't know if most Americans know this, but he was one of the potential picks for President Trump's vice presidential candidate Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. list. It was Mike Pence, Mm -hmm. Mike and two other individuals that were being considered Mm -hmm. by president Trump to be, uh, to be, uh, his, his vice president. Yes. And and so I learned that last night and it really sunk in. He said, you know what, Martha, it's up to us. You know, we can't, there's nobody else that's going to come in and save our country. There's nobody else that's going to come in and, you know, teach fundamental values of of you know to our children there's there, it's us we it are have to do it it is so i you know um those those words really uh are really dear to me and you know every morning i thank god for the privilege of being born in this beloved country and i remind myself that there is nobody else it's us it's we exactly. the people 
Exactly. I have a question for you. I do have it teed up if you wanted to watch it. Have you seen Nikki Haley's commercial yet for her announcement? I have not. No, I have not. Would you mind if I played it? Because I want your I want your opinion. I gave the audience my opinion already. And I I don't know if you heard any of my open and monologue, and that's fine if you didn't. I want to hear your first opinion. And I'd love to talk more. And I want you to share with the audience your background of as course. to how you've gotten to where you are. And, you know, just that the relationships that you have built within this high levels of government and what we see for 2024. So let me go ahead and tee this up. I want to go ahead and add it to the stream and then let me go ahead and hit it. By race. I was the proud daughter of Indian immigrants. Not black, not white. I was different. But my mom would always say your job is not to focus on the differences but the similarities. And my parents reminded me and my siblings every day how blessed we were to live in America. Some look at our past as evidence that America's founding principles are bad. They say the promise of freedom is just made up. Some think our ideas are not just wrong, but racist and evil. Nothing could be further from the truth. I have seen evil. In China, they commit genocide. In Iran, they murder their own people for challenging the government. And when a woman tells you about watching soldiers throw her baby into a fire, it puts things in perspective. Even on our worst day, we are blessed to live in America. I was born and raised in South Carolina, so I have seen the very best of our country. People here threw out the old, tired political establishment and demanded accountability for their tax dollars. Industry reports called us the beast of the Southeast, which I love. People came by the thousands for fresh starts. Moms and dads held their heads up high. Children learned that it was always it's a great day in South Carolina. It's, it's a great day. day. It's a great day. A great day. A great day in South Carolina. We were strong. We were proud. And when evil did come. Police in South Carolina are looking for a gunman following a shooting at a church. Several in victims. We don't know the uh, severity. We turned away from fear toward God and the values that still make our country the freest and greatest in the world. We must turn in that direction again. Republicans have lost the popular vote in seven out of the last eight presidential elections. That has to change. Joe Biden's record is abysmal, but that shouldn't come as a surprise. The Washington establishment has failed us over and over and over again. It's time for a new generation of leadership to rediscover fiscal responsibility, secure our border, and strengthen our country, our pride, and our purpose. Some people look at America and see vulnerability. The socialist left sees an opportunity to rewrite history. China and Russia are on the I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I mean, I think we get the gist of what she's looking to do. What are your initial thoughts on that? It was just, there was just a few seconds left in that. Eager to hear your thoughts. Well, first, I I want to uh, talk about a few things. Um, number one, I get asked almost every day as I travel across our great nation, you know, aren't I, don't I want a conservative Republican woman as president of the White House? Yeah. <laughs> great nation in the White House. And and let me just say that, you know, I do not vote for candidates based on whether or not they are women or not. Exactly. I vote the best possible candidate that's going to defend our constitutional rights and to keep the American dream alive. Yes. I vote for. Yes. If that candidate is a woman, then of course, um, I, I'm, I'm all for it. But you know, I literally get asked that, like somehow because I'm a conservative woman, therefore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should automatically cast my vote for whoever is the female with yes. an their name running for office. Yes. And then yes. This is 
I want to bring up is, you know, uh, um, one of my, one of my, you know, dear friends recently said this on the news, and that is, uh, competition is American. Competition mm-hmm. is good. You know, steel mm-hmm. sharpens steel. Yes. Uh, you know who said that? Kellyanne Conway. Ah. Who's been a an advisor yes. and, and a dear friend. She was asked, you know, the same, you know, a question about, you know, the crowded field we're going to see, mm-hmm. um, you know, against, you know, President Donald J. Trump. Right. And, you know, she said, look, steel sharpens steel. You know, yes. this is what makes America great. What makes America great is competition. Right. It it makes us better. It mm-hmm. brings better product to market. It makes us stronger. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can see that we see that time and time again in industry in particular. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. we come out with similar products and, you know, the cream always rises to the top yes. in every situation, in every election, you know, across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're looking at Nikki Haley, Mike Pence. Yes. Mike Peo, uh, <laughs> I, I, sorry about that. I, I, <laughs> My four-legged Secret Service team here, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, guarding, guarding, guarding the castle. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it, you know, we're we're gonna see a crowded field. I fully anticipate yes. to announce uh, probably in the next eight months. Um, you know, you can see that there, there's the book tours are trickling out, right? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah, his his starts uh, the 28th of February, and then he's just he's stacking it to California and Texas and beyond. Yeah. Yes, and of course, Mike Pompeo has his book tour going on. Uh, you know, I know all of these candidates. Yeah, some of them are dear friends, and uh, some of them I I know through through politics. But I know every single one of them. And you know, how blessed are we to have, um, you know, so many great candidates throwing their their hat in? Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, there are certain things that are indisputable. Nobody can deny that President Donald John Trump. Uh, did more in his first 500 days of office mm-hmm. in terms of you know promises made, promises kept than any other sitting president. Uh, yes. Ronald Reagan, he declared sovereignty over the Golan Heights. You know, five consecutive presidents on both sides of the aisle promised mm-hmm. to move the embassy to Jerusalem. He's the only one that did. Yes. Yes. Our borders, energy independence, nationally and secu- national security, national defense security. Did you ever think you would see? peace talks on the Korean Peninsula in our lifetime or ever. No, yeah. So the Ibrahim Peace Accords, you know, lowest unemployment rate. I can go on and on and on. Yes. And and, and here's the thing, you know, people speak of, you know, mean tweets, if you will. Well, <laughs> you know, how do you feel about, I mean, how do most Americans feel now? You know, elections have consequences. Yes, they do. You know, look look at the, the cost of everyday goods, you mm-hmm. know, on on the shelves in the supermarkets. These are most Americans vote with their pocketbooks. Right. You know, the cost of everyday goods. Gas in. Do I have enough gas in my tank to get to work? To take my kids to school? To to put food on my table? To have a roof over the head for my mm-hmm. over our heads for for our families? You know, these are what most Americans consider when they're at the polls. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Eggs are so expensive. I yes. Mean, you're talking to a farm girl here. I mean, you know, the cost of eggs are through the roof. Um, yeah, they are. The cost of everyday goods are, are skyrocketing. You know, there's so much uncertainty and fear and need hope right now. They need to know that they're going to have enough money to retire on, that they can afford, you know, to pay the, the gas and electric bills, right. that they can provide for their families. Right. You know, this administration has done so much damage. Yeah. Uh, you know, what under President Trump, we had energy dominance. Literally. Right. Yes, we did. Energy dominance. Yes. And so now uh, our our uh, uh, president is begging for gas and oil from countries that hate us. Right. And so so um, this this is what I tell everybody. You know, uh, you know our our electoral system in our country is far from perfect, as we all know. Yes. I mean, there's, yes. There's election. Election integrity should be something that we uh, we focus a lot of our attention on. You know what's shocking? We have some of the most secure elections anywhere in the world, believe it or not, as flawed and as... <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> we do. Now, there's one thing that we do need to get under control, and uh, it's my hope and prayer that, 
that Americans on both sides of the aisle will come to an agreement on this. We must stop sending ballots. Uh, yes. To people's doorsteps. I actually have a, a, a friend, a neighbor, who received five ballots, five, at their house. Now, can somebody mm -hmm. explain to me that what sense. or how that even happened? Right. Just, you know, we're the greatest nation on earth. We have the most sophisticated technology, the most brilliant minds in the world, and we can't fix this problem. Yes. I, and you know what it is? They don't want it to get fixed. Right. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. It's the whole control piece, the authoritarian piece. Yeah. If they wanted it to be fixed, it would be fixed. And, mm -hmm. and it hasn't been fixed because they don't want it to be fixed. Right. You know, um, don't even get me started on COVID. But, you know, we had the solution to COVID early on. Mm -hmm. and But that didn't make money for the pharmaceutical company. No, no. Mm -mm, yeah, no. It, did, it didn't make money. So and I and I, I, you know, it's a terrible analogy to make, of course. Right. Because. You know, uh, because innocent people died because of COVID. Right. Uh, but I'm going to make the analogy. And that is, you know, uh, just like there was a cure for COVID early on mm -hmm. that nobody wanted to talk about. Right. Because it didn't make anybody money. And people right. made it all over the world because of it. Right. Uh, just like it, it's, it's akin to uh, the problems we have with our elections in terms of having safe, um, accurate uh, you know, um, elections, they don't want to fix it. Right. Right. You know, I just say hashtag common sense, hashtag, uh, election integrity and hashtag <laughs> take out the pharmaceuticals. Yes. Because I mean, where is the common sense in any of that? That's why the show exists. And right. the show is all about what is common sense and what, what happened to common sense as we continue into 2024, you know, I, you asked me what my initial thoughts were on Nikki Haley jumping in. And, you know, I, I have personal family who, you know, really think a lot of her. And then I have other colleagues and clients who aren't so fond. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to go into listen, looking at her commercial. I thought it was coming out tomorrow. I thought I had a date for tomorrow. So I wonder if they did it a day early. But the long and short of it, she opened immediately with the race card. Right. And that turned me off. Mm -hmm. It really turned me off. And I get where she was going with it. And I understand why she was doing it. But why did she have to open up with that? It, it was almost like having a Kamala Harris, you know, sit there and say, I have an orange suit on and, and I'm a black woman. OK. What was it that Biden said? And forgive me and remind me. What did oh. he say? If you if you don't vote Democrat, you're not black. Did he say something like that? He may. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I don't remember. I, I I will look it up and see if he actually. I'm sure he did because that sounds like something he would there say. There was something to that effect that that, that mm -hmm. was. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I feel like, you know, this we are in such a critical time, and not just American history, but mm -hmm. the where America stands globally. Yes. And, and you know. I, whoever's running for president, whether it's Pompeo, Pence, yep. Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, yep. you know, Trump, you know, you know what they need to lead with? They need, you know, we're hiring them for the greatest exactly. job in the world. Exactly. In the United States. Yes. It's their job to convince us to hire them. Yes. And, and to that end, you know, I, I want to, you know what I want to know? I want to know what you're going to do for everyday hardworking Americans that struggle. Yes. Yes. And are afraid for the future. They've yes. been left time and time again. Yes. I want to know we're going to do for the hardworking. I want to know what you're going to do to make America first. I want to know what you're going to do to secure our borders and to protect everyday hardworking Americans that love our country. And they just want to be left alone. They want government yes. to leave them alone. You know, I want to know what you're going to do, what you're going to do for, for hardworking Americans. All of this other stuff, by the way, that commercial, Nikki, and, you know, yeah. I know Nikki. The commercial, Nikki, was way too long. Okay, yeah, was long. I didn't want to keep going because it was a, it was a long commercial. They should have ended it. I loved how they ended it with. I always wore heels on my campaign trail, and I always said in my campaign speeches, "I'm going to take these sharp heels and kick kick open some hard headed doors in Raleigh." And she ended her commercial on a similar note. They needed it to speed it up and get it to that point. It just went too long. Right. No, I'm, I'm with you. And yeah, it was way too long. I, I would rather have had her or all the candidates focus on solutions. 
On day yeah. one, I'm going to do this for the economy. On day two, I'm mm -hmm. going to do the border. On day three, I'm going to fix the energy crisis. Uh, and, and, you know, day four, drill, baby, drill. I'm opening up, you know, America's going to be open for for energy and go on and on and on and on. That's yeah. what I want to hear. You know, yeah. I'm surprised she didn't put up pictures of her when she was in grade school with her, yeah. you know, where's her yeah. kindergarten pictures? I mean, it was a little ridiculous. Um, you know, I also I also was looking for answers on the next generation. Yeah, she talked about the next generation of leaders, but, you know, the transgender and CRT, um, you know, I, I call it crap. And I know people don't like me using that word, but that's what it is. She didn't even talk about that. I am concerned about our next generation yeah. because they are no longer interested in understanding what patriotism is. They get a watered down history. They yeah. get watered down civics. They don't get it. And yeah. yet, and, and we wonder why the recruitment numbers are so low. And then it goes on and on and on. So where I want to hear what these candidates are going to talk about, what they're going to do for the next yep. generation. And right now, all I hear that coming from is DeSantis. And yeah, I love the great state of Florida and I admire what he's doing with the education piece to the state. But I want to hear it from others. If they're going to throw their hats in the ring, we've got to focus on saving our babies and what's going to be happening with the next generation. Yes. No, you're right. And I, you know, Look, I'm I'm in beautiful Palm Beach right now. The sun always shines. The palm, the palm trees always sway in the wind, and it and it's beautiful. But you know what? I think that um, that when we look at Florida, we mm -hmm. need to look at uh, the leadership, and it's been it's been excellent from Ron DeSantis. You know, mm -hmm. he handled tragedy. He's dealt with you know COVID, how he handled COVID. You yeah. know, Florida was open. Yes, and it was. See the ramifications of what's happening with our children. Many of them lost a whole year of education. They're repeating um, grades because they had no um, infrastructure because of, you know, the the harsh positions that many governors took to mm -hmm. shut down their entire states and shut down the schools, not even taking into consideration the impact that was going to have on our children. Right. Right. Exactly. And the thing is, being here in the state of North Carolina, I, you know, I got a call yesterday about the impacts of what is happening to our children. I got a call from someone who will be joining the show next week. I can't reveal any names or anything yet, but this person was sharing with me sexual assault of children, parents filed claims, the school did nothing. Abuse, assault of a teacher, ER reports, Police reports filed a claim to the school and the school said there wasn't enough evidence. What does the person need to be dead? So my concern is what is happening to our education systems? I had yesterday on the show, Senate candidate, Jonathan E. Moore for the great state of Virginia. He's running. You need to check him out if you haven't yet. And his top piece to his platform is CRT transgender. He will put a bill on the Senate floor first thing to defund the infiltration of what is happening in the school systems in and around the state of Virginia. That is his first initiative. And yeah. I want to see that here. I want to see that taking place. And instead, all these different side stories are happening. And this whole transgender and trying to understand the identity piece is happening. And, and, and people are turning their blind eye to it, whether they're in the GOP or another party, they are turning blind eye to it. And so I do say, you know, going back to the whole presidential platform piece, DeSantis has led the way. He has governed the state of Florida. And that's what we need as we look for a leader to run this nation. Well, I think that, like I said, steel sharpens steel. Um, I'm personally looking forward to the great debates that, that will uh, mm -hmm. unfold before us. And, you know, I, I think that we are we are primed right now mm -hmm. for what could be, you know, uh, global. We, we could be in we could be in war times right now and not even know it. There are things that have happened between China and the United States. I mean, let's not forget that that President Biden allowed the spy balloon to travel over some of the most top secret defense areas in our country yep. and that's outrageous i should have never have gotten that far no and, okay. no that is that's a dictator in chief 
Yeah. That's not, I don't call him a commander in chief. I don't even call him the president. He is a dictator, bottom oh, line. And yeah. he's in bed with the CCP. And don't you think we may be already at war with with Russia, with everything we're doing with Ukraine? Well, like I said, I don't think that the American people or even, uh, you know, around the world, people are fully aware of the ramifications yeah. of what is under this presidency. Yeah. And I can tell you one thing. If we as if we end up in a you know in a global war, mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you we do not want President Biden in that White House. Right. Uh, we need somebody who is going to put the American people first, who's not going to be compromised in any way, and who's going to protect us as a nation and protect every single man, woman, and child. Um, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. And point regarding education mm -hmm. and protecting our babies and, and children, you know, in in Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, which is, you know, home sweet home. I grew up in Mount Vernon, outside of our nation's capital, youngest of three girls, uh, went to undergraduate school and law school uh, in, in Virginia, right outside of DC. Um, I can tell you that that race, Terry McAuliffe lost that race when he said mm -hmm. that moms and dads, parents have no right yep. over education of their children he yeah. immediately lost that that race yeah nothing he could have said or done well to, everything went back yeah to because what he did was he ignited and brought out the mama and papa bears yeah and put exactly. on both sides of the aisle because i don't care what you believe in if you're a republican democrat undecided independent you don't tell parents that they don't have a right mm -hmm. they don't have a right to to know or be involved in what their children are being taught in school. I agree. I completely agree. I have next week a set of parents coming on and they're being told that currently. And, you know, the fight, I mean, the grassroots effort that took place in Loudoun and Fairfax County needs to happen, be happening everywhere. Right across it. Well, we have, I have three minutes left with you because then at 10 o'clock I'm doing another hit. But I, I wanted to just, first of all, say thank you. You know, America needs you. We need more of you. And, you know, what you're doing is so important. And, you know, I really, I I, I want everybody to hear your voice, to hear this conversation mm -hmm. and, and really be thinking. You don't know how many times I hear people say, well, my vote doesn't really matter, Martha. Who am I? You know, mm -hmm. I don't have a big social media platform. Um, I'm not engaged on it. I don't have a national platform, even a local platform. And, and, and everybody's vote matters. Elections are lost by a handful of votes. Yes. I give countless of examples of how elections are lost by five, 10, 20 votes. Yes. yes. I mean, every vote matters and we all have the power to make a difference. Yes. You know, social media today has changed politics forever. It has. Carry cell phones, smartphones. Uh, you know, we have the power and the ability with our voice to reach hundreds of thousands, millions of people mm -hmm. by our activism, by our engagement and just showing up, show up at the school boards, yes. go to county meetings, you know, get engaged with your local municipalities. And, 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 he, and he, here's the thing. It's the squeaky wheel at the end of the day mm -hmm. that that's heard. And, you know, we're, the silent majority is silent no more. And so I just, I just want to say thank you and God bless you and, and God bless you and yours and and, and, and also, you know, that you're called to do this. I mean, that is such a gift and a blessing to us all. So I just want to say thank you. I hope to be on your show again soon. Oh, yes. Love to have you back, Martha. Yeah. I am grateful for you. Happy Valentine's Day to you. <laughs> and enjoy that beautiful Palm Springs, beautiful sunshine in Florida. And I look forward to seeing you soon. I'll be in touch and uh, just go okay. get them. Thank go you. get them. Really honored to be on your show. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. For all of those who are tuning in, this is Common Sense America. Thank you so much for being here on this beautiful February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to you and yours. And we look forward to having you back tomorrow. We have uh, some special guests joining us tomorrow. Again, more new guests joining the show. We are talking about Southern farmers. We're talking about agriculture. We're talking about how it is how the Obama and the Biden administration affected our uh, farmers in the Southern Territory. So we will be talking with Corey Lee tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. And by the way, have you 
ordered your military Java coffee. If not, go over and pick up some. We will be having Matt Phillips join Common Sense America. He's the founder of Military Java Group. And I love the coffee and look forward to each and every one of you enjoying the coffee. Until then, go love on somebody today. Be grateful for the air that you breathe and be grateful that you are in the United States of America. God bless you.